Hello, everyone. It's mostly football. We're back. Been a minute. Been a whole week. <laughs> I don't know if you heard. Tua Tungvaluwa got a concussion. It was pretty bad. Maybe we'll talk about it. it. Seems like old news at this point. Who knows? Got plenty of other stuff to talk about. The Deep South's oldest rivalry turned into the Deep South's oldest ass whipping real quick. Georgia. <laughs> Pulling out ahead of Auburn and never looking back. We're going to talk college football. We're going to talk MLB playoffs. We're going to talk NFL. It's mostly football, baby. Welcome in, MFers. Hey. Uh oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. It stopped. Oh, great. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And that guy's pumped. And we're here, baby. We're here. Don't push me. There's a reason for that. We're talking about that later. Guys, so much to cover. Nate, I know you wanted to have a particular something out in the open real quick, real early. So I'm not even gonna waste our time. I'm Let's just go. gonna get I'm just gonna go ahead and get this off my chest right now. The floor is yours. Okay. Fuck Roger Goodell. Okay. Fuck the NFL. All right. And fuck Tom Brady. Not even two minutes in. That is all. Did you see the horse shit? Did you see that shit? Did you yeah, see the shit? I saw that shit. Did you see it? I saw that shit. Not it was only, bullshit. It was bullshit. It was dog shit. Not only did it happen on Sunday, that it happened on Monday. I mean, Wednesday, the, Thursday, happy days, dude. I, I mean, mean, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm like, so his, so the, the referee's excuse, which is the, this is what tells me that that guy was paid off. Ah, okay. His, his like wording this. was he threw the flag because Grady Jarrett unnecessarily threw Tom Brady to the ground. And I thought about it and I'm like, what the fuck else was Grady Jarrett supposed to do? What could he have uh. done differently? Uh, I mean, if the referee felt that he unnecessarily threw him to the ground, that clearly qualifies as unnecessary roughness. <laughs> I'm just, I, I was, I was, I was baffled. I was just, I was confused. I would, I would want him to go further. What, what makes this particular play of him spinning around, wrapping Brady up, and simply bringing him to the ground, not like there was you know, nothing, he didn't he didn't lift him up and suplex him, nothing no, like that. Nothing, none of that, none of which happened. And I'm just like, I'm like, I'm sitting here literally watching this shit happen. Like, I'm, ha- I'm happy as shit. I'm like, oh, you like, okay, we give it to get the ball back. We fit they go ahead and we fit the score. And then the flag comes out, and I'm just sitting here and I'm just looking at my screen and I'm just like. No fucking way. I was like, there's no way this is happening to us right now. I was like, there's no way. I'm like, are you fucking serious? A flag for roughing the passer? I'm like, and then and then here's the here's the irritating part. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Speaking of no way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the honorary member of mostly football, the third wheel, you could say, the ghost of football past podcast past indeed is here tj the whiskey pro himself is here to grace us with his presence and tell us all about exactly what he thinks of mr tom brady hello tj hello (laughs) voices in my head are clapping again it has been a minute my friend it has man tom brady um great goat no, awesome shut up. awesome person shut up no he's not the feeder of falcons divorced. that's why he's getting divorced now bitch. Oh, <laughs> oh we're taking shots at the married life now that's where fuck we're going fuck wow. him fuck the referees fuck the nfl as an organization and an institution fuck all of them that's <laughs> horse shit that do it dude this whole this whole week has just been me watching that play over and over again. 
<laughs> You're talking about plays. I got one we could talk about. And trying to figure out what the fuck. Like literally. I'm at this point, I think all I think the I think defenders should just start sitting out. Like we're not gonna play until y'all fix this shit. So you think I, a strike should happen? I feel I at this point. I mean, you, you gotta think about it. The offense is protected by the rules of the NFL. Where's Ray Lewis and all this? I hadn't seen him pop up once. I, I probably, probably he don't give a shit. Where is Ray Lewis? Right, Ray, he's been a, he's been a spiritual leader somewhere at some high school. <laughs> but okay. my my thing is, it's just like I feel like as a defender, I, I'm not playing no more. You can find me. I'm not gonna play this week. Until y'all fix this shit. Because the NFL is like, well, we're not going to make any changes. Okay, cool. So you're just going to keep fucking us and the offense is going to be protected. Is that That's what I'm getting at. Okay, that makes sense. Because it happened to Chris Jones on fucking Monday. He sacks Derek Carr, takes the ball. How do you get rough from the passer on a passer who doesn't have the ball? How do you get fired on your day off? I mean, it's just. Like, it don't make any sense. Like they literally threw the flag. Like Derek Carr didn't even have the ball, but they call rough on the pass. I'm like, I think you gotta have the ball to be a passer to get rough on the passer. But and really, you know, this this yeah, all goes back originally to Tom Brady. I mean, when Bernard Pollard hit him in the knees when he was pay- playing for the Patriots back all those years ago, and Pollard was on the Chiefs and took Brady out for the year, and they had to play with Matt Castle after that. I mean, I get that. Fantastic I mean, undefeated season, almost undefeated season, if not for Eli Manning and David Tyree. I, I mean, mean, if if it was, I mean, I could see if Grady Jarrett. It all started with the goat. I could see if he slammed him, like dumped him on right. his fucking head, right? Or he hit him like at the knees. Or he made contact with his head or neck area. I would truly understand that. But that was a routine tackle. That I mean, was routine. Because the same thing happened to Patrick Mahomes on Monday night. It was the exact same tackle. And no flags came out. Nobody said anything. And they just turned a blind eye and kept playing. So I'm just like, and then the fucked up thing is what really irritated me about the whole thing is Tom Brady asked for that call. Because when you see him get up, he looks at the ref, and he's like, hey, what the fuck? Of course. And then he's like, oh, oh, my bad. I'm he's like, it was a late fucking call. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, y'all just didn't want to see them blow a 21-point lead and Tom Brady lose three straight. <laughs> yeah, it would look would look pretty nasty, pretty ugly. Fuck that. Fuck Tampa Bay. I can't wait till we play them fuckers again. I hope we I hope we get if I'm Grady Jared, I'm gonna give you a reason to give me a 15 yard penalty. I'm gonna make sure you give me a reason. I was very surprised that it ended up being that close for like what 25, 29, something like that. No, it was 15, 21. We were six oh. points away. Oh, and then so the fuck up thing is so like we were killing us. And then the fourth quarter hit, we scored two touchdowns, and then we get the stop. And that defense was shit. The defense, they were tired. They were exhausted. And we had an opportunity to go down and win the game. But it was taken from us by some. And then fuck the thing. Dylan, I, are I you hate... drinking pee? No. He's it not. is tasty, tasty pee known as Angry Orchard. Okay. Okay. It looks like that. Mm. But that's my rant for the night. Fuck the NFL. And their bullshit rules. You know you're still going to watch next week. I know. I am, but it's still it's still gonna be fucked the NFL and, and their bullshit rules because it's it's horseshit. And then they they came back and said, "Well, we're not going to change anything." Okay, that's fine. Because I'm gonna feel like this. I feel Jimmy. bad for quarterbacks right at this point. I, I feel bad for quarterbacks <clears throat> coming this coming week. Nate or uh, TJ, I should say. What were you about to say there? Uh, so Nate's going off about the NFL referees and we all know that it's no secret i'm not a big nfl guy never have been never will be um my rant is not only just with the nfl and college it's now getting into our school systems carter had a game tonight and they had literally the worst refereeing i have ever seen in my life Mm, they missed seven late hit calls seven and then one kid jumps off sides and they almost throw him out of the game for what? I don't know. They couldn't give us a straight answer. It's just the referees have got to get better. I don't know if we need to start having 
mandatory training during the week. It's not hard to be a referee. I gotta understand. I truly do not understand. It's not hard to be a ref. Like, just call the fucking game down the fucking middle. If the shit's unnecessary, throw the fucking flag. If the shit's there, call it. Don't make shit up and then defend it later to make yourself look better about it. We had 45 seconds left in the second quarter to go to halftime. And they threw nine flags in a row. How the fuck you throw nine nine flags in 45 seconds? Here's the funny part. There were only three referees. What the fuck? Man, hey, listen, me, y'all gotta figure some shit out. And the, I don't I don't get how hard it's not hard to play to be a ref. Like it's really not. You don't they I I the, the here's the, the problem. I think that I disagree, by the way. That it's hard to be a ref? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that hard. Yeah, it's, it's, not that hard. it's very hard to be a ref. It's not that. Listen, you. I will say making this particular call it, was not hard, but in the NFL, it's hard. In the NFL, you have four referees. You got one. You you got four different people. It, it, it shouldn't be that hard. You you should be paying attention to your what you should be paying attention yeah, to. Unless you are Ed Hockley, who works out every day of your life and has, you know, you big old arms. I don't. Uh, I don't think it's normally that hard. A, a, you're normally a tiny, frail old man. Out there amongst gladiators, Kiss my and you have to make these split second calls in the moment. Football's flying over your head, guys cr- crossing your face and crashing. Not in the back for the offense, you're not. You just looking at people holding. I, I don't. I don't think it's that hard. I think. <laughs> I, I think the issue is is that TJ in the house for Ghost Force. Thank you so much, TJ. I, I think. The, I think the biggest issue is is that mm-hmm. the NFL they don't have examples. They just say, this is what it's going to be, and this is how it's going to be. So when shit happens, now you're calling flags on stuff that shouldn't be called, and sometimes you're missing the extra shit. You, we, we clearly know what pass interference is. It's clear. We know what that is. Like that shit, that shit is not, that shit is never questioned. We have an issue with determining what a catch is for whatever reason. We, we don't know what a catch is. I mean, um, again, another tough determination. Did he bring it to the ground? You know, did he catch it all the way through? How many steps does he need to make? I mean, you, you're, then, you're, you're selling these guys short here. And I this, feel like, and I feel like that's the biggest issue. Like, you have to like. <laughs> you, I think you got to dumb this shit down for him. The biggest problem. Uh, this goes back to when they changed the the horse call to rule. You know, you can't grab guys by the horse collar anymore. Now, I understand times change because when I played football, th- that was like just a way to play. You grabbed everybody by the horse collar and you yanked them down if you couldn't tackle them the right way. But uh, and now it's targeting. You know, every week I watch college football, somebody's getting ejected or they've got to review a targeting call. These kids are uh, kids. I mean, hell, professionals, they're flying down the field at mock Jesus running the ball or running to tackle somebody. You can't just stop all of your momentum. Now, I understand if it's head-to-head contact, and I understand that we have to take the concussion protocols. I get all that. You're you're protecting the players from young to old, and I understand that, and that's fine. But we've got to do a better job uh, with all these rules. If you're, you can't change the rules every year. Now, obviously, if there's a massive injury that happens, then okay, we need to take a step back, look and see what we can do to protect the players. But you can't expect to have a targeting call every single game because you're not going to have any players in. No. Yeah, the, the targeting stuff is, it really drives me wild because these kids, I mean, sometimes we're talking a huge game. I mean, your senior year, your rivalry team, you need this game to add to your resume to get a good draft pick or whatever. And all of a sudden, you know, first play in, sh- shit happens, bang, bang, play. You both put your head down and now you're gone. It's like, you know, Throw the flag, fine. Give the kid a 15 yard penalty, and then if there's two, eject them. But the, a first time ejection, they think it's a behavioral thing that they think if they just eject all these kids, then the other ones are going to be scared to tackle like this, and that it's going to be some. It's not that way. It's not that all these kids want to hit dirty. It's just that you, you're in the midst of like the the strongest, fastest guys on planet Earth, like. That's just the way shit is going to happen sometimes when you both crash into each other 
Like, and the idea that you could penalize these kids by kicking them out of the game, so like such an important game sometimes so early, is pretty ridiculous. So, initially when all this shit started, the one thing I like about college is that they review targeting calls. And I feel like the NFL, I feel like there's some rules that the NFL should incorporate with themselves from college. And if it's like a person, I think personal files should be reviewed, period. Personal files, like roughing a passer, late hits should be reviewed. Because the shit that happened on Sunday would have never fucking happened if someone was to review it. And the crazy thing is, everyone agrees. The only person who doesn't agree is Michael Irvin. He's a piece of shit. I don't like Michael <laughs> Irvin. don't like him at all. I do not like him. He sat there on a goddamn first take with his stupid look on his face and said, Grady Jarrett violently threw Tom Brady to the ground. I'm like, you I almost call I, you piece of shit. Michael Irvin. Mm. Okay. He did not. First of all, he didn't violently throw Tom Brady. That's the part of the game. All right. That's what it is. Tom Brady went to the ground and everyone's like, well, it's a tool hit. Guess what? If, if the Dolphins would have did what they were supposed to do on Sunday and keep him out and not force him to play four days after having a concussion, saying it was a back injury, that shit wouldn't have happened to that young man. Well, that does play into it as well. I do think that too was, you know, the way that went down definitely played into, but I mean, because it, it was a similar way the town went down. So the thing for me is this concussions are a part of the game. That's just what it is. It's the, it's the, it's, it's the scary part of the game, but it's a part of the game. Like you're not going to be like, you're, you're hitting, running into another human being at breakneck speed. And there's nothing you can do about it. Concussions are a part of the game. Now, how these concussions take place you can control. Obviously, the targeting, the unnecessary roughness, that shit you can deal with. But if I go in and I sack a quarterback and he weighs a buck 90 and I'm 340 pounds, hey, I easy. him around like a fucking feather, it's not my fault his head smacks the fucking turf and he, he fucking locks up. That's not on me. That's it, it, There's nothing I could have done differently to prevent that from happening. That's Here's I have. Here's another complaint I have. If you go back, you you watch college, you watch the NFL, and even some of the high schoolers, most of them are playing on turf now. Do you have any idea how many injuries occur because of ACLs, MCLs, yeah. knee and injuries because of, of turf? A lot of a lot of receivers, Odell is one of them, and a few other receivers are like, get rid of fucking turf. And I don't just like get rid of it. What's wrong with natural grass? Just get fucking rid of the turf. Like, just get rid of it. Well, we might as well shift gears here a little bit. Uh, still talking NFL, but not Tom Brady. Did you guys happen to see? Yes, I saw this. This is so stupid. The moment went down. TJ, did you catch this? No, uh, I'm I'm out on this one. I missed it. This, I guess this is this is this is so. Is this the guy that, that tackled Tom Brady or no? No, 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 no. no, no. Okay, Devontae okay. Adam, he he was a little butthurt at how his team lost on Monday, and he's walking out. And a camera guy was coming across for whatever reason, and he pushed him, and he kept walking. I'm like, dude, really? Is that uh, Tyler Perry? No. I think it is. I think that is Medea. Yes, it, it, first of all, it's super unfortunate, and I, I steer clear of deciphering what people's uh, mental or approach is to this situation. Things were handled poorly. And well, who's that in the middle again? Devontae Adams handling that poorly by pushing name, but she's um, been there for a while. The guy down. And obviously things come along with that. Oh, Jason um, Taylor, um, sister. Um, another thing I thought about is when these guys are coming off the field, that needs to be clear. That needs to be a clear tunnel. So I'm not blaming no, they gotta show it. Pushed down. I understand Devontae uh issued <laughs> an apology. He's acknowledged that he's wrong for what he did. That's why the apology came. Charged right with after. misdemeanor assault. Mal intent. And on, that's uh, gonna be. That's gonna come with a slap on the wrist and a fine. But these are the consequences. And and two, like the realistic thing is when when people. It's a misdemeanor. They talking like it's a guy, felony. It's, Devante, that he probably didn't he makes enough money to pay that fine and move on with his life. It's, they didn't show the shove, man. It, it it wasn't. I mean, honestly, the guy, the, the guy. You gotta think about it. Devontae Adams is what six two, probably like two hundred pounds. The guy was 
he was a little white guy with a fucking camera, and he just <laughs> happened to walk across Devontae Adams, and he got put. Devon, and the thing is, like, he didn't even put any force behind it. He kind of just like shoved him with like. Give just, him a ten thousand dollar fine and move on. Seriously, a misdemeanor. It's a no. I mean, you you say little white guy. Like, I mean, where does the white come into play? I mean, I mean you brought. Guy, that's what he was. I mean, you bring up white. I'm just. I'm curious why that. What? What? Yeah, he could have been Stephen A. Easy Stephen A. He could have been, Stephen a. He could have been of, of Latin descent. I mean, well, why does it matter if he's white? I mean, what if, if he was black, he would have got out of the way quicker. Is that what you're saying? You know, he was just Jeez. a little guy and he got pushed. That's all it was. Like, I'm so glad I got to come on before y'all got canceled. They're escal they're escalating this shit for no reason. Like, so it's a misdemeanor. Move on. It's gonna be a slap on the wrist and a fine. He ain't going to jail for it. Like, get the fuck over it. Like, move the fuck on. I mean, personally, if I'm the white guy, I'm like, hey, I think I need some money. This this can't be a thing. I mean, the guy who uh, did this uh, at the Rams game and Bobby Wagner hit him and got supposedly he got a concussion. All right, that's I mean, two different. That's apples and oranges. First of all. You Apples gotta, and oranges. You got to be the stupidest motherfucker, first of all. The Rams getting their asses handed to them at this point. Okay? They hadn't had a good defensive play all night. And then you were in your stupid ass on the field with pink smoke in your hand to, <laughs> announce, your, to announce your baby's gender. And Bobby Wagner laid, locked, laid your ass up. You deserved it. You yeah, right. got to follow a police report. You know, they, if I'm the police, that he, I'm laughing at you. I'm like, bro, are you yeah. serious? Like, you're you're being charged with trespassing, and um, and you you're mad because he hit you. You shouldn't have been yes. First of all, why would you run that close to the sideline to begin with? I am not. If I'm going to do that, I'm staying in the middle of the field. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere near the sideline. You're dealing with time. NFL football players in full pads, and you're going to run next to the sideline. I he, hope he you runs. get crushed. He runs directly next. Bobby Wagner, all he had to do was step out and up. And that's how close he – I'm like, why the fuck? If you're going to do that, stay in the middle of the field because they're not going to chase you, okay? The security guards are going to chase you. The players aren't. You run that close to the sideline, I'm going to light your ass up too, period. It's, it's that simple. You're that's not, a free what? shot, man. You got to take it. Ah, 100%. <laughs> I'm helping the security. You're trespassing. You fucking well, you guys idiot. always think that the players are on their side. Like, ha ha, isn't this funny? Like, uh, no, you're, you're, my, you're I need to go game. home. Like, my paycheck, come on, let's go. Like, you're disrupting the game. Like, why do you think the players are finding this funny? It's not. It's oh, they find it funny now. Especially if you they're getting their asses handed to them, and then you run next to If you'd have ran next to the Niners bench, you might have had a chance of getting away. But <laughs> you. You ran into the team. I don't know that defense of the Niners is pretty stout, man. <laughs> They're losing. And Nate, you say players won't chase you. I remember, I don't remember who the player was, but it was a safety for one of the teams. And the guy was running around, and all of a sudden, this safety was like, I'm tired of this. And Started chasing the guy, and the guy, it was like a, a canine was coming after him, and the guy immediately <laughs> just dropped to the ground. I think if they realize security's not going to catch this guy, I think they're going to go. But for the most part, they just stand there and look around. But I I would never, if I had to do that, I would never run next to the sideline. I, I'm not. Like, you just got a mouthful of helmet. That's what you got, a mouthful of helmet. Now, TJ, earlier in the show, you, you made a reference to, to a last play scenario, and we got to bring it up. I, I know. I, I know that's the only reason you want to be on here tonight. This past weekend, your Texas A&M Aggies took on those bravely. As, as the White House would say about the countries we like, they fought bravely uh, against their opponent. And uh, unfortunately, it came down to Jimbo Fisher and at a last – well, I'll let you take it from here. So, look, I have been Jimbo Fisher's biggest defender since he got here. I have fought off fellow Aggies. I have done everything I know to do. And I don't know if it was Jimbo's call. I don't know if it was the offensive coordinator's call. I don't know if it was Haynes King's call. I don't care. But this play that they called, they were trying to thread the needle on the sidelines. They were trying to overload them on the left side and take them one-on-one on on the right. Yep. I I know what you were doing, Jimbo, but you're an idiot. And Hanks King, you should have audibled. 
They didn't call and, for it. And, and, and the other part of that is everybody now I'm reading on all these trends at AM of oh well that was the pass interference, it was a hold. Go back and watch that play. That the right guard moved twice and the center readjusted the ball twice, so they're off sides. So it, the referees were letting them play football. So I don't want to hear that argument. Shut up. And this is coming from a diehard AM fan. <laughs> I, I I bleed maroon, so I don't want to hear it. And and for all you Maniacs out there that are screaming for Jimbo to lose his job. Look, I, I hated it too. I'm still pissed about it. I'll be pissed about it all year long. But you replace Jimbo Fisher. Who are you going to go get? Man, the, uh, the, the the Panthers head coach that just got fired today? Yep. No. Uh-huh. Shut up. No. Yep. Nope. He's, nope. He's a great nope. college coach. <laughs> hey, he turned Temple and Baylor around. He's yeah, a great Temper, Temple and Baylor. Hey. Not A&M. He's a great college coach. He's not. You're, a great you're gonna replace him. You're gonna replace Jimbo Fisher with him. I Are you would. kidding me? No. I would. Damn straight. I think Jimbo, uh, Jimbo Urban, Fisher. The Urban Meyer. Yeah, I think he's available. Uh, yeah. No. Who? Urban, Urban Meyer. Meyer. He'll just he'll <laughs> just start punting players. That's all he'll do. I personally feel like I wish y'all to beat Alabama, but y'all. Be, losing by four did even better because mm. they fell two spots to number three and we took the number one spot back. So y'all did. Y- you didn't do what I needed you to do, but you did something. This if year for I'm... A&M has been uh, heartbreaking to say the least. We had all this promise and I knew going into this year that it was going to be a disappointment because A&M does this every year. We had a really solid year last year. We beat Bama at college station and we, we kind of fell apart at the end. And I, I knew this year with a new quarterback, you have a bunch of freshmen coming in. And then we've got, I think, what, eight injuries since the start of the season? And y'all which- know what you I, I, I'm, I, I thought after everything that happened in the offseason with Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban, I thought for sure Nick Saban was going to be like, you know what, fuck them and fuck that team. We're going to hang 100 on their head. But – Y'all held your own. I mean, to lose by four, I mean, in Tuscaloosa, um, it's pretty damn impressive. Yeah. But I, I think if you call a different play, if you if you make Alabama think you're going to run the ball, like play action, or even not even really a play action, just something quick, like a quick slant or some, something simple, not like I'm going to throw the ball to one receiver when there's three fucking defenders around him. And don't even even if I complete it, he's not in he's not in the end zone. So if, even if the he catches it, I don't think he was in. I don't think he, he, he would have been, been a yard short. He'd have been short anyway. I think you got to call a different play. I think you got to make Alabama think you're going to run this ball because they wasn't that far from they wasn't that far. I think there was on like the three or four yard line. Make them think you're going and then because the the thing with Alabama this year is Alabama don't they don't they don't have the NFL talent anymore the wide receivers don't have the nfl talent and they had a backup qb the defense their their defense is not that nfl caliber defense that you usually see every year they are suspect that's why i'm nervous not nervous i'm really excited to see what they do against tennessee this year i'm nervous to play tennessee i'm gonna be honest with you i i feel like if they beat bama they're gonna beat us and I, I'm 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 a little nervous to play Tennessee this year because they they got a quarterback and they got a team and these motherfuckers they hung forty on LSU with no effort. The, so. the Tennessee game's going to go one of two ways: either Bama's going to get really pissed off at what happened against AM and they are just going to completely throttle them, or Tennessee is going to play Bama to the very dying end, and then Bama in the fourth quarter is going to put their foot down and say, "You know what? Enough's enough," and they're going to beat them by seven. Bama don't have that talent. That's what you're not. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They don't have that talent anymore. I understand they don't have that talent, but they have the coach and they have the staff to to. They were off to po- Texas. They have this coat. They have the coach and the staff. They to, almost lost to Texas. Okay, in the beginning of the season. Oh. Yeah, they almost lost to Texas. They almost, who, they, they almost, they, Arkansas almost came back on them, but luckily they didn't. They, they don't have, you can have Nick Saban, but Nick Saban, he understands his team is not that team that he's had in the past years. They are, 
they struggle on defense. They they give up a lot of yards. I mean, they've only beaten a couple teams handily this year. I mean, losing to Texas, beating Texas by one, beating A and M by four. I because honestly, I went to that Texas game. They were supposed to blow them out. If Quentin Ewers don't get hurt, Alabama loses that game hands down. There's no question they win that game. And well, I I learned from a wise man once that told me many years ago. There's two people in football you don't bet against. That's Tom Brady and Nick Saban. I, I bet. I, I bet. I I bet against Nick Saban a lot. I, I I would definitely if we had if if they had to play A and M any like later in the year, I'm betting on A and M 100. I will bet on A and M because for whatever reason, A and M always gives Bama a run for their money. That's because Jimbo Fisher used to coach with Saban and he knows him inside and out. I mm. I I would bet. I would bet against Saban. There's there's teams that he plays. I'm willing to bet against. It's this just, was around the horn. I would have just awarded TJ points right there. That's, that's just that's just that's just one of the things I'm willing to do. And I don't I don't trust Bama. Hell, I've talked to a lot of Alabama fans, and they don't trust. <laughs> they're not trusting Alabama this year. They I know one guy. He's like, yeah, I'm thinking hey, we're gonna lose at least one game. And I think this Tennessee this Tennessee game might be that game. It because Tennessee is playing like out of their fucking mind right now, and that quarterback they got is is I think what his name is Hendon Hooker or something like that. He is. Hey, watch your mouth. He he he. I don't I don't know. Like he was bad last year, but he's improved tremendously this year. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of excited to see how this game is going to play out. But I damn sure don't want to see Tennessee this year. They definitely may be in the playoffs. So from what I remember, now to wrap up this Alabama talk, and that play was open initially. It was it was very similar to when the Bengals, uh, I think they had some wild game a week or two ago, came down to the wire and Jamar Chase ran a quick out and he, he got the touchdown. I mean, it was very similar to that play. Like the, the receiver ran that route perfectly. It was open. It's just the quarterback was a hair too late throwing it. And that's what happened at the end. I actually thought it was a good, you know, it seemed to be the right call for the right time. Just poor execution. What can you do? But how about this? How about my, I get to claim them now because I'm pretty close. Uh, <laughs> South Carolina Gamecocks upsetting these Kentucky. What? what? Kentucky started. The funny thing is about Kentucky, they started the year undefeated. And they were running their mouths. Everybody was on Kentucky's bandwagon. Oh, they gonna run the SEC East and yada yada yada. Yeah, all right. Look at you now. Go look Cox. at you now. Go Cox. All right. L- l- look at you now. Uh, I had some other pretty close games. I'd love to watch the highlights of. I mean, Friday Huskers barely taking down the Scarlet Knights. Houston barely over the Memphis Tigers. Yeah, Tigers. Yeah. Um, Ohio State handling the Sparty. Who do y'all play this week, Nate? Sorry. We Ooh. play Vanderbilt. So, oh. yeah. How about Stetson Bennett just running? What was that? Sixty some odd yards, just right down yards. the middle of the field. 60. I didn't know he had wheels like that. Yeah, he got wheels. The problem is he 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 getting a little inconsistent, and, and it's starting oh, to bother. Oh, Shane in the house. What's up, horny gnome? It 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 is. Oh, it, it, all three beautiful ladies on the show. You're right, sir. We're here. His inconsistency is starting to show. Like he, like the Missouri game showed a lot. Um, Kent State showed a lot. Um, I, I just need if I need him to stay consistent for me. That's just what I need. I need the consistency. But for the most part, I think we got. I think as long as we can continue to run the ball successfully, we'll be okay. I mean, it's one of the best names in all of uh, college football, Stetson Bennett. Yeah. I, He'd be right. Definitely behind General Booty, but it's up there. <laughs> he plenty played for Oklahoma, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Major Applewhite. Anybody remember that one? I sure died. Brought that name up when it was, yeah. dude. Dude, that shit. Right here. Dude, that shit was yeah. embarrassing. Oklahoma should have just stayed home. Turns they out because they should have stayed home. <laughs> he's actually a nephew of uh, another Booty, John David Booty. Don't know if you remember him. I know played for USC and then uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Those booty boys. Jesus Christ. 
Um, Texas. Oh my God. Yeah. Oklahoma should have just stayed home. What the hell happened in the Red River? Oh, Jesus, blood ran wild in the Red River rivalry. Yeah, yeah try saying that ten times fast. <laughs> they, they they play like they Oklahoma forgot. They forgot. I guess they most of the team didn't get off the bus because they oh, they cool. play. I saw one play was a wildcat play, and they had the running back. He runs to the to the line of scrimmage, jumps and throws it, and it gets picked off. And I'm like, wait a minute. Can, can we do away with that stupid play? I was like, why would you do that? I just oh, that's a Tebow even... special. That's beautiful. I, I know it's a Tebow special. Can we do it? With... Tebow is no longer with us. Can we think... stop? I'm no longer I, with us. I think it's time to get rid of the Wildcat. I think it was the stupidest fucking offense to to ever grace this great sport of football. Like it's it's fucking dumb. Like no and one... everybody knows when you run the Wildcat, what's going to happen. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it, it's predictable as hell. No, I'm not. Me personally, you guys, you guys are so corner, wrong. You guys are so so wrong. Of if course, I'm a corner and a and a quarterback comes out, I'm jamming the dog shit out of him. That's I'm so going tough. to make him understand you need to stay at the center and by the center. If I see your quarterback come out in a receiver position, I'm putting my linebacker on him, and I'm going to have him just cream your quarterback. Just cream, just knock Do his you guys out. Not remember when Don Terry Poe ran the Tim Tebow jump pass, but it was beautiful. First it of was all, beautiful. This first, whale, this first of mountain all, of a man on, who never it, should have ever gotten a snap in his life. It worked because they were on a three yard line. Derek you Henry, had this big motherfucker back here. So yes, everybody in the stadium is expecting him to run the ball. They're not Derek expecting Henry it. has pulled off the Oklahoma. Ball. I think Oklahoma was on a fifteen when this shit happened. They were, Everybody in the building when Don Terry Poe ran that play, everybody was new. This is three yard line. They finna push it in with this big bastard. No, we're not doing that. I think he passed it, didn't he? He did. He did the jump pass. But everyone was expecting a a run play. You gotta love it. <laughs> this year, this year's uh jump pass is the fucking Philly special. Everyone's trying to do the reverse pass to the quarterback and it's not working. Sometimes it works. It works. Zach Wilson got one. Zach Wilson got one. He got, he got one him. Mind. Go Jets. DJ, that's that's my next question. Yo. How do you feel about your Jets, man? Oh, we're I'm loving it. Jets. What do they hang like? Uh, I, mean, they're three and two. I think they're three and two right now. Yeah, and they, they, they hung like 40 points this last week. Yeah, they hung 40 points on the Dolphins, the the the, the so-called contenders. They hung mm-hmm. they hung 40 on them. So how do you, how do you feel about your Jets? Uh, I'm liking their chances. I think they'll get in. right now with, with – with little as I keep up with the NFL, I've been trying to pay a little bit of attention to them. Mm-hmm. I want to say that they might sneak in and get a wild card spot, maybe. Yeah. So All right now they're saying that the 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 AFC East is the is like one of the top top divisions right now because I I think the only team that's under five hundred is Patriots. No, yeah, the Patriots. No, they're yeah, I think they're two and three. So just, someone I forget who it was I think it was Robert Griffin. Maybe I'm giving him wrong. Yeah, nobody credit. cares. But someone said we deserve a uh, year. I think it was a years long or maybe a months long uh, free membership to. Oh Amazon yeah, absolutely for that just for that horrible the, game we were forced to watch Thursday night. That shit was awful. Was it really that bad? Because I, I I didn't watch it. So. TJ, this is here, I'm 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 about to give you the rundown of this game. Okay. The kickers and the punters were the all stars of this game. Wow, that that's no bullshit. The kickers and the punters were the all stars of this game. <laughs> At, Russell Wilson played like dog shit. Matt Ryan played like dog shit. The receivers couldn't catch to save their fucking lives. There was actually one play with the Broncos. Russell Wilson throws the ball deep downfield, and two Bronco receivers catch it. How does that happen? Why so, do you have two receivers in the same spot? I actually like, felt the pain of starting Matt Ryan in one of my fantasy football and, and here's the worst part about it, TJ. And you want to hear the worst part about it? What's that? It went to overtime. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we had an extra quarter of this horseshit game. An extra quarter. So when I... Started Matt Ryan in this fantasy football league. I did it completely forgetting that Matt Pryor starts at right tackle for the Indianapolis Colts. And that is very important. 
because Matt Pryor used to play for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he used to be a backup offensive lineman for a very good reason. Matt Pryor may be the worst offensive lineman in the entire NFL. This guy is a mountain of a man. I mean, he is, pro- I think he's like 6'9 and like 330. And he's, oh, Jesus. He's, he's enormous. Reason. <laughs> but he cannot move. The only time he touched anyone all night long was when he was picking Matt Ryan up off of the ground. <laughs> he stands up time. and he watches the Broncos run by him every freaking time. It was so sad. I mean, Matt Ryan probably could have played, you know, when he had time, he probably could have made better decisions, but he never had time. It was immediately ball snapped guys in my face because Matt Pryor is just running the matador uh freaking blocking scheme all night long. They had the they had to scrape him off the turf. It was <laughs> and then I on the other side, uh Raymond, the guy they just drafted, couldn't he didn't know the snap count all night long. He had so many <laughs> false starts. And when they did run a play, he was holding. He was the rookie. He's the rookie. Good lord! I mean, the Colts offensive line is in shambles. Matt, yeah, so Matt Pryor is from TCU. Yeah, he uh, is. Born December sixteenth, nineteen ninety four. Twenty seven years of age. Six seven, three hundred fifty one pounds. This guy yeah, looks like a monster. But from what you're telling me, he's he, he's, he's like moves like person. Elmer Fudd. He's the, he's the friend you bring to the club with you because he looks intimidating, but if anyone steps up to him, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> it's a pillow princess. <laughs> it's just terrible. That is awful. But no, they seriously though, they they that game I I I I need I need the NFL to figure this scheduling shit out because yeah. if you're gonna do Thursday nights, put some interesting games on. Okay, like put some divisional games on something. Put like Patrick Mahomes and fucking Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes and uh, fucking Josh Allen. Something that's going to make us want to watch it. Who the fuck wants to watch Commanders versus Chicago? Uh, Who? (laughs) That's why it's on Amazon Prime. (laughs) Who wants to watch on Amazon Prime? Who wants to watch Chicago and the Commanders play for 60 minutes? I mean, it's it, you're, the Jeffrey Dahmer memes are going to be just all over the place. I just fucking, I'm like, I'm like, y'all got to do better with scheduling. Like, come on, man. Like Thursday night should be, I, I feel like Thursday night should be divisional nights. No, like that's it. Divisional games. The Thursday night games have been interesting, but the London games have been pretty fire so far. Last no, week no, was no, good, no, from what I remember, no, and no, then. How about Daniel Jones taking down the Green Bay Packers? Green Bay's in trouble. Green Bay should stop panicking. You're, you should definitely start panicking. You lose to the Giants, you should stop panicking, like, big time. Aren't they on their, like, third quarterback now? Who? The Green, Giants. Uh, the Giants? No, Daniel Jones is playing. Yeah, he's, he's dinged up, but, man. They got hurt. Uh, it was what, it was like a couple games ago where they all got hurt. Oh, but okay. They, but – the thing is, they only they lost no receivers. The Cowboys. They no none, receivers at all. None. Zero. They they paid fucking Kenny Galladay all that money, yeah. and he they, he they benched his ass because he they signed Clifford Franklin from the replacements. He's playing for them now. <laughs> I don't know if you can believe that, but Clifford Franklin. Well, is when I hear that name, I, I I think of the gloves. <laughs> it was just... it, he's, a, he's he's not bad. You know, he's okay. But uh, yeah, the Giants, the, 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 you got you got to give their coach a you got to give him a round of applause because he is winning with uh shit right now mm-hmm. basically. And then uh, Kenny Pickett's starting debut, unfortunately ruined by a thirty-eight to three runaway by the Buffalo Bills. And let me just say, yeah. I listened to uh, one of my favorite podcasts. Shout out to Matt and Shane's secret podcast, Shane Gillis, uh, very. Hilarious comedian was apparently just in Buffalo doing some shows at Helium. And Gabe Davis, not only um, Shane went to the game, uh, treated by Gabe Davis to go to the game. Uh, Gabe ends up giving him a signed jersey, takes him and his boys out that night to Dave and Buster's, completely rented out the entire place because that's how baller NFL players are. They can just rent out an entire Dave and Buster's. A bunch of women there. 
you know, alcohol. Apparently Shane was tripping on mushrooms and couldn't handle a lot of it. But it, <laughs> I mean, Gabe Davis apparently is the man. So shout out to him. Hey, it sounds like a fun night. Yeah. You go and have a, you have a, a fucking career day. Imagine, imagine us three, just us three g- hammered, drunk, tripping on mushrooms, going to hang out with a bunch of NFL players at our rented out day. I mean, just, we would, we would be embarrassing. Absolutely. 100%. I, I, I'd be fine. I, I don't know about you two, but I'd be fine. It, it would, yeah. It wouldn't it's, end well. Yeah, but no. That, that, that Pittsburgh has a lot of work to do. Indeed. They need TJ Watt back. Uh, yeah, tremendous. Well, he's been, his, his procedure, procedure that pushed his time coming back. So, so I have a question, a legitimate question, because again, I don't keep up the NFL, so I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Um, Tomlin and Belichick, do you think that the, their careers are coming to an end? No. They're going to – I think what's going to happen is – is well, with Belichick, he has his quarterback. He just got to get a – he has a quarterback and he has a defense. He just needs receivers because, I mean, the Patriots don't have – the Patriots never been that organization to draft receivers. They, for whatever reason, like going to grocery stores and finding bag boys and turning them to fucking receivers somehow. At uh, this point, yeah, I think Belichick, I think he has the respect of the owner, Robert Kraft, so much that it would have to be an atrocious, like, mm-hmm. losing season. You know, less than 500, se- maybe back-to-back, less than 500 seasons. I mean, he went, I mean, his worst His worst season was what? They were 5-11 and 11 when Brady went down? Yeah. Um, but well, I mean, year of my life. As far as Tomlin goes, uh, they need T.J. Watt because that defense ain't shit without him. They like, they're awful without T.J. Watt. Like <laughs> literally, they're the worst defense in the league without. It's 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 insane. I mean, Minka Fitzpatrick player. is still amazing. Oh, don't get me wrong, but he got his ass torched on Sunday. You, this is the same thing I said about Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman was a great corner. When he had a pass rush, when you don't have a pass rush, when you don't have that pressure, it's a different ball game when you cover a receiver for four to five seconds. You become a mere <laughs> mortal. Yeah, basically. So that secondary with Pittsburgh, I mean, you look at the difference between week one and now. Week one, they look like a top, top, the number one defense. Um, they look awesome. And then T.J. Watt goes down, and then they damn near lose the game. And then after that, they just suck the ass after that point. Mm-hmm. So. You got Justin Herbert and the Bolts uh, managing to overcome Jacoby Brissett, who's actually been playing pretty well, and the Cleveland Browns. Austin Eckler's been on fire. How's my boy uh, Nick Chubbs doing? Is he still oh, he's awesome. hanging there? He's right. still, yeah, ripping he's off big run. He okay. hanging his nuts on everybody at this point. Yeah. Uh, Kirk Cousins and the Vikings take down. I mean, I don't know how the Bears even have two wins at this point. They they, they cannot the throw the ball at all. At all. You know, they don't have no receivers. They have it no take, it's throw. every throw that's completed is a miracle. It's crazy. Justin Fields is looking mm-hmm. like a complete bust at this point. So that's what's happening in the NFC North. Speaking of an NFC North, uh, the Lions managed to put up zero points. They got their asses torched. They're against the <laughs> aforementioned Patriots. Dan Campbell is on his way out. He might oh, have- I like Dan Campbell. Come on. Cut the have- guy some slack. Uh, yeah. No, you got to understand something. He he had this mentality last year that like, this bite kneecaps and shit and I feel this way about this team. Listen to me. Your feelings are only going to get you so far in the NFL. Mm-hmm. At this point, their best game was the one game they won. They were in a close one against the Eagles. And then they were in a couple close ones, and they get their assholes blown off against the Patriots, who is not even that good of a team. It was one bad game. Give a break. Their last game, I mean, was a shootout. They came back and from I think from a pretty big deficit. But... And you let and you let Kirk Cousins fucking throw the ball all over your defense, and then you lose. You had the lead against the Vikings, and then you let them march down the field and beat you. Nah, Dan Campbell's on his way out. He he probably got like another year. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna say another year before he's out the door. 
If you had Taysom Hill in your fantasy football lineup this weekend, you were in luck. Uh, treated to four touchdowns. I, I'm going to be honest with you. BYU quarterback. Geno Smith is better than Russell Wilson. This wow. Season. This season. He's Don't say that. Wilson. Don't say that a few games into one season. Don't say that. Super Bowl. We've had a we've had two a very games? different careers between few Gino games? Smith and Russell Wilson. A few games. He yes. went head to head with he went head to head with Russell Wilson week one. Nathaniel Hackett is the hey, reason. Remember this, the remember this moment of Cam Newton when he slid down the bench? <laughs> they Geno Smith has been playing his fucking ass off. He what he had the four touchdown game against Detroit. He, yeah, they lost to us. Mm. Uh, Mr. Burns, you yeah. have something to say I, there? I, where's Cam Newton now? I mean, he's probably he's on a couple, couple podcasts here and there. Probably hanging. How's that MVP bar. run going? That was last year. He's MVP of that cigar bar, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but Geno Smith, Geno Smith is playing. He's out playing Russell Wilson this year. He's making that trade. That he's I would give. He's making the Seahawks look like fucking geniuses. Because of the way that the way he's playing right now, he right now for this season, he's better than Russell Wilson. Russell just hasn't looked the same since that uh, hand surgery. It's Nathaniel Hackett. It's not Russell. Like we gotta, we gotta blame Nathaniel Hackett at some point. Hackett's not making. He's definitely messing up. He's the up. only coach that I know that has to hire an advisor to help him with time management. Who does that? How about Brees Hall looking like an absolute stud right now for the New York Jets? If if they get that, if they get him going, and if they can get them, if they can get a couple more pass catchers, because the ones they have now, I mean, they got Garrett Wilson who's pretty good. Uh, there's another one. His last, I think his name is Moore. Yeah, he, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. He's been he was consistent last year. I don't know what the hell has happened to him this year. He was better with Flacco. He's got to get on track with Wilson. And then there's, uh, they have Corey. What's his name? Corey Davis. Davis. Yes. Yeah. And he's he's shown flashes here and there, but nothing spectacular. Yeah. But I think Zach Wilson is going is coming into his own. I think if they can get this offense together, I mean, what he went fourteen for twenty one for two ten. That's not bad. Uh, how are the uh, Titans doing? Just I know it's random. I just saw the Titans mm-hmm. there. Straight ass. Straight ass. Straight ass. I, can't read on. Their record. Oh, I don't even want to talk about this. Keep rolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Uh, all right. Keep scrolling. All right, all right, all right. Be an asshole. Keep scrolling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dick. Boy, I mean, look at those numbers, huh? 351. Whew, Three, look, but, but look at the but look at it. He went the, so he went for 351 in one touchdown. And then we stormed back. We hit we put 15 points. We held them to zero points. In the fourth quarter. Is Leonard Fournette a receiver now? Leonard Fournette's the best thing they got going right now because Mike Evans is on and off the field. And Chris Godwin can't stay healthy. Julio Jones can't stay healthy. And then they don't have Gronk. They miss Gronk. Gronk was a big part of that offense. Even though he was a distraction for the most part of last season, he brought a lot of attention to help Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I, I don't care what anybody says. I've always been a Gronk fan, and I always will be. Dude, he 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 made a difference for that offense, and now that he's not there, you can see the you can see the difference without him. Yeah, but I think he he kind of understood that he was he's a bigger man, and his injuries were starting to stack up a oh, little yeah. bit. And and Tom Brady yeah. should once Tom Brady realized he lost his starting center, he should have been like, yeah, I'm staying retired because there's no way I'm getting behind. He's been sacked a lot this season, more than you guys like to have these stats. Uh, two catches. Two touchdowns, 105 yards. The fucking, fucking commanders. And yet, trash. not enough to win the game. They're fucking trash. Carson They're Wentz, bad. Carson Wentz is garbage. Got yeah, those, those numbers are uh, deceiving. Yeah, it's extremely deceiving. He's Carson got a Super Wentz. Bowl, though. He does have a Super Bowl. Mm, nah, Carson Wentz is trash. And, and he's going to get Ron Rivera fired in, in Washington. That's... <laughs> Ron Rivera is one of those guys I have a lot of respect for, but his team is doing him no favors at all. They're, they're not. They're, they're not. And then their best player, shit, he's not. He hadn't even touched the field yet. 
Now, this says Walker's gaff, so I'm only assuming Trayvon Walker did some sort of penalty or something. I don't, I didn't see that. Fish runs, Walker's gaff helped Texan topple Jags. The, come on, first of all, look at Trevor, Trevor Lawrence's numbers, okay? T Law. 25 for 47 for 286 yards and two interceptions. Mm. Get the fuck, who, who are you supposed to be like that? He fumbled four times against the Eagles, two interceptions against the. Dude, come on. Just, 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 just stop. They, and yet they, they're two and three. They need to go ahead and implode that. Just, just the season's over. Just implode the season. It's done. Y'all just need to go ahead and play for their top spot because they're they're ahead of the team. They're like tied with the team that just beat them now. You don't, you don't have receivers. You, you don't. You, you signed Christian Kirk for whatever fuck, whatever dumbass reason. I would have never signed. Oh, Kirk. that's a lie. That's a, look at this right here, Marvin Jones. I. I would. They don't have receivers. I would have never signed those guys. I'd have found. I'd have did my fucking best to get some. I would have did my best to get Allen Robinson. I'd have did my best to get uh, Mari Cooper. Why not trade for Mari Cooper and Allen Robinson? Why not? Why the fuck not? Why not give him some actual targets to throw the ball to? They oh, saw we, Christian Kirk running all those routes and said, Christian "That's our guy." Kirk is Y'all hear the uh, latest on? Uh, let's see if I get this right. OBJ. Yeah, he's saying November. He's looking at November. And he he is screaming at um uh, I don't remember the other teams, but there were three teams that he really wants to come to, but I know he's he's begging Jerry Jones for a chance. Oh, don't do that. Don't and do I'm that. I'm just like I am like no, just don't stop. Stay. Don't don't how about oh, you? Oh no, we don't have look what you didn't start it. Look what you didn't start it. Oh my god. Already you, coming at him. Now you got somebody defending Trevor Lawrence right now. Oh, Look what you just started, DJ. Oh, leave, leave Sunshine alone. Okay. Now you leave got somebody Sunshine alone. defending Trevor Lawrence. How about speaking of the uh, Panthers? They are in trouble. No head coach. Oof. Uh, and no, no defensive coordinator. Big no, kind of high ankle sprain. Not looking good. <laughs> no. Not looking good. It looks yes, like they're going to be turning not. back to Philip Walker. Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. When are you going to come and eat those two chips? Oh man, we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll see how the season plays out. That's still okay. early. Cam can come back. It's still early. Yeah, they can still call him up. <laughs> no, no one's calling him. They they have a they have a signal at the top of their stadium. They <laughs> they put it up in the sky whenever they need him. They're not calling him because so they so they don't have Baker. Sam Darnold is not ready, and then Matt Corral is done for the season. So they gonna Philip Walker is gonna be their guy. This couldn't have been a good game when your third wide receiver, his numbers, his leading numbers were four for sixty nine. Yikes! You get it. That's awful. Now don't get me wrong. The the Niners has a pretty. They had a pretty good defense because they just lost a fuck ton of players. They lost their starting corner. He tore his ACL, and they lost a few other. I'm like. They get hit with injuries every year. Well, what do you say? Well, he isn't going to start top 10 games or be in the top 10. So you're going with those chips. <laughs> so now, I, I have I a question. Ev- yeah, ask the question. Uh, Dylan, this is for you. Oh, boy. Um, Cowboys are on a four game win streak. They're going to lose this Sunday. It's no, it's no secret, no surprise. Mm-hmm. Are you going over or under uh, that your Eagles score more than 30 points? Mm. I'll say under. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I've got the Eagles winning 27-24. I'm going to say this, though. First time, long time. Rapid Dave coming in. <laughs> I'm going to say this, though. You got to give your height and weight, just like on the DP show. If – Micah Parsons cannot play. It's going to be a different ball game because he was dealing oh, with a growing, he was yeah. dealing with a growing injury on Sunday, and I'm pretty. And them shits don't just disappear within a week. If he can't play on Sunday, or if he does play and he's not a hundred percent, it's a different ball game for the Eagles. They're going to be it because Demarcus Lawrence is not Demarcus Lawrence before he got paid. So um, there's that. Okay, 
Yeah. Yeah. Alan, I, 80 is a little much, man. I think you're kind of throwing a high number out there. I, I'm thinking more like 75 ish. You two assholes. 72, maybe. Um, you defend you defend Cam Newton one time, and then they're like, and then and then, and then it's just it's just a they take off with it. Oh, let's address this here. Five nine two forty five. Who's five nine two forty five? And the second is quick. Thick. <laughs> that I boy's that. thick. Is there a line I can call into? <laughs> anyone? Anyone need a human stump to uh, maybe toss around? <laughs> According to Nate, he is a top 10 QB. To end his career, he will be top 10. At the very least, top 12. Bullshit. Oh, yeah, he he yeah, a lot of faith. Yeah, Nate. <laughs> a lot of faith, of course. Of course. No, uh, I actually, I have no assumptions, presumptions that uh, Eagles are going to take this game. I mean, it's in Philly. I like that. We're on a hot streak. I like that. But this is exactly the opponent. At exactly the time of year that just is enough to piss off Philadelphia fans for the next, even if even if they whip the shit out of the next two opponents after the Cowboys, if they lose to the Cowboys, it's gonna be all we can think about. So yeah, it's it's gonna be. I like I said, I, I looking at the injuries because Dalton Schultz is gonna be out. You're obviously gonna have Cooper Rush. Uh, okay, we need to get rid of Dalton Schultz, and I'll tell you why. Because he went on a Twitter rampage a while back, and he said the In and Out Burger was actually better than Whataburger. You are on the Dallas Cowboys. You cannot you say should, violent should, things should, like that. You should mm. trade him for a bag of chips. At, <laughs> wow. at this point, he should. And he, he also should. said Tex-Mex was not good. Oh no! And you're in I, Texas. Hello. I heard he said Philly cheesesteaks were actually pretty good. So I don't know. Well, Maybe they he's... are. I mean, I'll give credit where credit is due. We're going to see how Co- who our Cooper Rush plays this week when he plays against real defense. They, uh, this is going to get interesting. If Cooper Rush, especially if he wins this game and, you know, a deck decides he's healthy or the team decides he's healthy right next week. You can't Ooh. put that right If the Cowboys win this game and they bring Dak back, they're idiots. Can't. You can't. Because it Dak, would just prove how dumb Jerry Jones is. They play like shit with Dak week one, and then they've been on a tear since he's been on the bench. So I I don't think they should put him back in. But I don't. I mean, even if they lose this game, I don't think I don't think you can just throw Dak back into the fold because it, it's it, it was just it's gonna throw everything off. What about okay? So obviously, you know, if they win. It's going to be harder to push Dak back in. If they lose by a lot, obviously people will be like, okay, we're ready for Dak. But if they lose by, like, a field goal? I'm going to say if they lose by a lot and Cooper Rush didn't make a lot of mistakes, I mean, you can still make an argument for him. But if they lose by a lot and he had, like, three picks. Right. Yeah, then you got, like, okay. But if they lose by a field goal? You, there's still an argument to keep Cooper Rush in a starting line. If they lose by less no than way four, you throw Dak in there, go and pick up. <laughs> if they lose, he's not gonna let. He's not gonna let you go. <laughs> I, I see that. If they lose am, by less than four, the Cowboys need to ride Cooper Rush as much to. as they can. Ride him like Jeffrey Dahmer at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Just, you have just to. do it. You, you, you have to. There is no other way because you, you can't. You can't just say, okay, well, this guy has held it down. We're going to pull him out and put Dak in who he played in six weeks. It just, it, it's going to throw shit off. And then when you lose the game, then you're just going to be like, oh, we just, no, you knew exactly why you lose, lost the game. So, obviously, I mean, Eagles stay undefeated there. The Cowboys, I couldn't believe it. Honestly, in LA, that was impressive. I'll give the Cowboys props for that. Root Cooper. It, what, whatever. That was like a home game for the Cowboys. Did you hear that stadium? <laughs> Did you fucking hear that stadium? Did you they see all the blue and white? And they don't show around. up in L.A. I will say that for Dude, sure. They show up in L.A. for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore taking down the Ravens. How about Lamar Jackson with no one to throw to and still? The Bengals are frauds. Pulling it off. They should have never made it to the Super Bowl last year. They're fucking frauds. Joe Burrow. Not. I'm sorry. Not Joe Burrow. That bullshit offensive line is going to get that young man killed. He's not going to make it five years. 
I I mean, this was supposed to be uh, new and improved. We got Kappa. We got this. Spent we got that. Seventy million dollars on that offensive line. Lyle and Collins. Like my God, it is Swiss cheese. Period. It is fucking that young Might man. Well is, throw Matt Pryor in there. He's <laughs> he's going to die back there. He he's not going to survive it at all. Like it just it's it's getting bad for him and. They're gonna suffer for it. I'm just oh, sure. we got... they're rolling with their shitty QBs and not signing Cam and playing him. <laughs> he makes a good point. I mean, the guy he, he makes a great point. He does. It seems awesome. like he only needs to work out. They're probably just blackballing him. Uh, I'm sure Cam's doing sit-ups in his driveway right now. Giving him, giving him the Kaepernick treatment. <laughs> I'm sure Cam is giving a speech somewhere about how women need to be, you know, maybe tone it down a little bit. And maybe just you know be more supportive of your men, something like that. His career is definitely over. You think so? Oh yeah, it's definitely over. Oh, speaking of careers over, TJ, did you happen to see um, the latest photos of Antonio Brown? Ah! <laughs> no, holding a flashlight in a pool. <laughs> wow. I didn't think it was very safe to be uh, holding electricity like that in the water, but dude, that. I, I'm he 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 should definitely be the poster child for CTE. <laughs> I, I I believe it. I believe he should be the poster child for CTE because there's no way he's in his right mind doing the shit he's doing. Why? A- Just because he's shoving his ass in total strangers' faces. AB <laughs> a- is that kid in the back of the class that we all had that was eating, licking glue off of his hands, it's and you just let it happen, man. Just just leave him alone. So, uh, did either of you guys happen to catch the Monday night game and yes, four touchdowns from Travis Kelsey? Like Travis, the fucked up thing is, he only had like 30 yards. Dude, tell touchdown. me about it. I'm losing <laughs> by... Okay, so in this same league where I started Matt Ryan, right? Because I started Matt Ryan, I was losing by a pretty good amount. Going well, there's your first night. mistake. You started Matt Ryan. Exactly. <laughs> So I'm losing by what seemed to be an insurmountable amount of points going into Monday night. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Travis Kelsey, I have him only left. We'll see. One touchdown, I'm like, whatever, don't care. Two touchdowns, still don't care. Three touchdowns, okay. Uh, let's see what happens. Yards. Four touchdowns, I'm like, oh my God, it's going to fucking happen. And he just, 24 yards, 24 yards. <laughs> <laughs> That's what killed it. So he scored four touchdowns in fantasy. That sounds like a lot, but he only had twenty five yards. Twenty four yards, <laughs> which really, really, it doesn't. The touchdowns mean nothing without the yards. Fuck it, just <laughs> if each one of those catches was just a ten yard catch, I mean, I I win. <laughs> twenty four <laughs> touchdowns and twenty. Like Legarrett like Blunt used to do those. No, he'd have four touchdowns and one yard rushing because it'd be goal line. Like it just <laughs> these Jerome <laughs> Bettis ass numbers. So like all the people who was excited for like, oh Travis Kelsey, yeah, but you can look at the touchdowns, but look at the yards because oh. that makes a difference. Listen, if you weren't losing by seventy points like I was, I'm sure you won that game if you had Travis Kelsey. But absolutely, if you were me, you just got a nice little tease for the end. Could of the you night. imagine if he went for hundred and four touchdowns? Like that, he had hundred yards and four touchdowns. You, it'll put you over the top, but because yeah, I don't want to. You don't want to look at the Falcon score, and I don't want to think about that. <laughs> a and M used to have a running back by the name of Javorski Lane. This guy was an absolute train. <clears throat> oh my god! And uh, he, take me down memory lane, right? And uh, Javorski Lane was playing Oklahoma at A and M. I was at the game. He had four touchdowns, and he was on his way to to tie or to break the record of five for a running back for A and M. And at the end of the stats, they show the, the stats on the screen for Javorski Lane, nine and a half yards. That's all he had. They were only giving him the ball like on the two yard line all game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Javorski Lane, dude. I was really rooting for him. Short little stint with the Dolphins. I don't remember much after that. No, he disappeared. Well, let's do a little preview into next week's game for the NFL, and then we can wrap this thing up, gentlemen. Uh, what do we got for big, big games? Can, we talked we, about our can commanders. We skip Thursday night. Can we skip Thursday night, please? Oh, we got, 
you know, it's a big game. Much, much is on the line between these two teams with losing records. Right. One's trying to get a, one's trying to get even at five hundred, and the other one's trying to get close to five hundred. <laughs> Commanders win in a, in a blowout, nineteen to sixteen. Wow! <laughs> you got two bad quarterbacks with Dude. two bad offenses. The only positive thing is Brian. Was his name Brian Robinson? He's the only good thing that they the Washington got going for themselves, and, and that's it. This, this this game is awful. All I'm gonna say is we got twelve to nine from Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson. So let's see. Hopefully these two non Hall of Famers in Justin Fields oh, and Carson God. Wentz can pull something. Else. This is gonna be an awful game. Uh, again, That's Cam so Newton. Uh, <laughs> whatever team signs him. That imagine, it's imagine a the day Bills. Day. The Bills just need a backup. It's and they need a guy who looks like Josh Allen. And Tony's going to eat his fucking words if that ends up happening. <laughs> um, back to the – oh, we got 49ers at Hotlanta. How you feeling about this one, Nate? Uh, with the Niners' defense struggling as much as it did, our defenses actually have been – they've been on a tear lately. And I've been really, really impressed with them. So I, I think we can take this game. No bench, Allen. Start here. He goes. Um, in, in wildcat situations, who knows? I think it's going to depend on how Jimmy G plays. Really, it's, it's going. But I, I'm a, I'm gonna say we'll take this game. It, it okay. is probably going to be a. It's probably going to be another close one. Um, I like the Patriots taking the Browns, even if it's how about Bailey Zappi? Didn't even give him enough. Hey, Zappy. you know who's here? Allen's here, and he's a big fan of the Lions, who got Bailey Zappy this past week. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about Cam? I forgot to mention that. You want to talk about how y'all got your asses blown out? Mm. I mean, I think I think Bailey Zappy Bailey wasn't Zappy. he like undrafted from Western Kentucky or something? He didn't even. I didn't even know his name. So, so you want to talk about that, Allen? You sure you want to do that? You want to keep talking about Cam? No, I mean, I mean when, when you have a former number one overall quarterback in Jared Goff versus Goff. an undrafted Western Kentucky quarterback in Bailey Zappi, <laughs> of course you would expect zero to 29 in that game. <laughs> yeah, get your shit pushed in. <laughs> so anyways, I like the Patriots over the Browns there. Uh, hey, wait, 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 wait. You let's bring in TJ for Browns? this one. You picking the Patriots over the Browns? Oh, for sure. Oh, no, Chubb, Chubbs is going to run all over him. That's what I was thinking. And like I said, uh, the quarterback play has been great in Cleveland for, you know, there's been a couple of mistakes, but. Because um, they got rid of Baker Mayfield. I, <laughs> Listen, after last week, I'm not I, I'm not a Bailey Zappi doubter, okay? <laughs> so. We'll see. Throwing that out there. I want to know how TJ feels about his JETS traveling to. Lambo, give me the Jets. Yeah, yeah. I, Jets. I, 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 I agree. The Green wow. Bay looks, they look disheveled. They, they, they don't. The receivers and Evan Rogers, his young receivers, and they're not together. <laughs> Let, what do you say? Let's talk about how you say. Oh it. boy, yeah. I don't see the Packers scoring more than twenty-four points in this game. <laughs> Oh God! Sure. You know, the Packers score more. Who have you been watching? You think this this Jets team is just uh two thousand Ravens? I mean, I'm not gonna say that, but I don't think I, I can't. I, I'm. I think it's gonna be a close one. Um, but I think I, I just can't. I don't know. The, you got Aaron Rodgers. I, I'm this blown away right now. This is not gonna be a close game. You think the you think the Packers gonna blow off the Jets? Absolutely. What? Damn. Absolutely. I don't know. Listen, I get it. It was an ugly performance in London, but the, the it was an ugly performance in week one. The team's getting healthier. Bakhtiari is getting healthier, and the, the wide receivers are clicking. You know, Dobbs has been looking really nice to go with Lazard, who's healthier. And I just I don't see this being fucking close. I think Zach Wilson's got another dub in him. Give, Give me, me the twenty four to ten Green Bay. Twenty four to ten. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's a, that, that's an insult. Uh, we're gonna see because that like a bad taste in my mouth. That Green Bay defense got to step up. I mean, Saquon. They have been. They've been playing pretty good. 
Saquon pretty much ran all over them last week. Yeah, the time zone is just weird over there. Isn't it? <laughs> it's in the time oh, zone. Go with the excuse. You didn't go to time zone, did you? Yeah, I, no one knows when to get over to London. You got to show up a week <laughs> early. You show up the, the night before. I, I don't know how to adjust your body to that. Oh, my God. Um, and then we've got Jags and Colts. I mean, I, I'm, Jags. I'm, give me the Jags. Jags. Yeah, Jags. I'll probably take Jags here. T-Law's going to run all over them. Yeah. 72 to 40. They, they, they shut them out. They already shut them out once. I don't see that game turning out any differently. Um, Vikings, Dolphins. Uh, Vikings. Teddy Bridgewater. I don't know who's going to be starting here. The Vikings. I'm, that's, I'm taking the Vikings. Because Tyreek Hill might not play. You still have to. Uh, I'm taking the Vikings. Oh, speaking of, uh, I mean, it seemed like only yesterday we were wearing these Guardian caps that were going to change the game, and if only we wear them in week two of the preseason, then we'll cut down some questions. I mean, dude, a Tua Tungvaloa is lucky to be alive right now. Uh, Naeem Hines just, like, collapsed on the field the other day because he had a bad concussion. Like, what the fuck are we doing pretending these Guardian caps are doing anything? They do nothing. Nothing at all. But yeah, uh, Vikings, Vikings against Dol- Vikings over the Dolphins. Uh, this is gonna be a bad game. This is you got two bad teams, one who can't protect the quarterback, the other one you, you don't you don't know what Andy Dalton you're gonna get. Taysom Hill is probably the most consistent thing they have. Alvin Kamara is finally stepping into his own. Do you um, listen to the words that come out of your mouth? Sometimes. No. <laughs> but Taysom Hill is the most consistent thing they have. He what plays other, like five snaps. What other consistency? What other consistent thing do they have? How about At, a guy Elvin, who takes more than five snaps a game? Elvin Kamara's first good game was last week. He's been fumbling. He could. He, he, he's having issues with fumbling this oh, year. Oh, okay. So we got Skylar Thompson is starting, according to Allen here. Bridgewater and two out. Bridgewater got a concussion too. Yeah, he got he got concussed last week. Jesus, <laughs> Lord, man. This this might be, worrying, I don't know about you guys, but this concussion thing is not looking good. <laughs> it's not. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, this is a coin flip here. I, I, I would say the Saints. I, I would probably have to say the Saints. Well, yeah, they don't have Chris, Chris Olave is out, so they don't have receivers. What's this, the who day versus who that? I'm bullshit. Yeah, Chris, Chris, Olave, Chris Olave is concussed. And then Michael Thomas, he he's injured. How you how you miss two years and you came still in the fucking field? How are you gonna doubt my boy Marquez Callaway? See, that's the problem. See you and Marquez Callaway, and then you got this Zacchaeus individual that you keep bringing up. It's so and, funny, dude. That's where I was going next. That's where Saturday, I was going next. You do not put enough respect on their names. And then you and then, you said Dolphins just need to sign Cam. Yeah, sure. And then he catches hey. a touchdown on Sunday, and I'm like, this motherfucker here. That might not be the worst idea. Give me the Ravens over the Giants. Give me the Bucks over the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think the Ravens Giants game gonna be it's gonna be a close one. Four and one Giants. Mm. Mm-hmm. Four and one. Tampa Bay right. over Pittsburgh. I could take that one. What about mm-hmm. these two teams? That's gonna be a fucking slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> the Rams are gonna slaughter the Panthers. There's no fucking way this is a close game. At all, Sam Matthew Stafford, who is the shell of himself, looked bad outplay, last week. Looked he can outplay. Bad. He will outplay. I'm Cooper Cup might go for 200 yards. Ooh, he might go for 200 yards against this bad Panthers defense. Uh, give they me the Rams. I don't know if he'll be back. Give me the Rams. Give me the Cardinals over the Seahawks. What? Give you the Cardinals. Cardinals over oh, okay. Seahawks. Yep. Woo. What? Yep. Geno Smith is going to walk into that building and walk on Kyler Murray's ass. Oh, we're getting this game already? I love yeah. it. Ooh. That's, dude. Hell yeah. I, I'm taking Bills. Bills okay, by I'm loving this uh, the slate right here. Damn. Bills are my Super Bowl pick. So. Bills by two touchdowns. By two touchdowns? Yes. The Chiefs defense is is, is you after, if you watch the Monday game, you you concerned about that. That the Raiders are trash, and they should have never did what they did to no, not twenty nine points. Mm-mm. This um, game here is going to be the game of the week. This is going to—I think it's going to be a back and forth. I really do. Is Darius Slay still? Is he healthy? 
Uh, I need to look into that to know for sure. But as far as because if he's healthy, then Michael Gallup and the rest of those wideouts are going to have to help because CD Lamb ain't getting shit. This takes me back to when Kyle Orton was starting for the Cowboys while I think Romo was out. Kyle fucking Orton. And the Cowboys were actually looking kind of good. They were beating the Eagles. And then all of a sudden, Kyle Orton throws an interception to Brandon Boykin. And the Eagles never looked back for the rest of that game. Kyle Orton got absolutely destroyed. So hopefully we see more of the same. I think it might. I think it, I think Cooper Rush might. He might struggle. He's finally playing like a good, a, a better defense. And then the Cowboys' defense is going to go up against the actual offensive line that can protect their quarterback. And Jalen Hurts, he's, he's mobile, so you're not you're not just going after someone who's standing in concrete. Like, I mean, my run. boy, I don't Jalen Hurts. Let's just take a second to you know really admire. Blah blah uh, blah. blah, blah. <laughs> I'll say this. this guy. Listen to me. I've become an Eagles fan this year because they've been helping me in my fantasy. I, I <laughs> you're dead he, to me. He was on uh he was on <laughs> the last Monday night game. He was on with the Manning brothers during their broadcast. And I'll say this Jalen Hurts, not the most exciting interview I have ever seen. <laughs> yeah. You kind of really, you, you kind of, you kind of got a, you're, you're pulling teeth getting stuff from Jalen Hurts. You know, as far as his, maybe it's in a, in a different setting. It's just you and him and a couple beers. He might be a lot more fun, but it's, it was awkward. I, I, you know, there's some people who just camera shy and they don't really respond well. Also, two paintings of himself uh, right behind him. I found that to be quite odd. He went to Alabama, so I'm not, I'm not, and Oklahoma. I, if and, I come over to your house and you got two paintings of yourself on the wall, you I'm not staying for dinner. Bastard. Yeah, you conceited bastard. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's gonna be an awesome game. And then Broncos Chargers. I'm Chargers. The Chargers. entire NFL fan base has been disappointed in this Broncos team. So Bron- I had the Broncos as a playoff team this year when they traded for us. I thought that he was going to come in and he was going to make this offense as potent as it should be, but they look impotent. Okay. I thought he was they, gonna they, finally give some horsepower to this goddamn Broncos team. Yeah, he he did the complete opposite. He killed the fucking horses at this point. Like they look like Nathaniel Hackett is a terrible coach. Okay. His time management, his 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 red zone offense, it's it's all shit. Nathaniel Hackett will be fired by the end of the year. He's there's no way. Him. There's no way. You, there's no way as a as an organization you look at this guy and be like, mm, he needs more time. No, 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 no. He has enough time. He has talent. He just sucks as a head coach. Well, TJ, thank you so much for joining us tonight, sir. Thank you for having me. Is there uh, any parting words? I mean, you've been super busy at work, working for the city, just on call all night, every night. Getting water turned on, turned off. My God, there. Been a busy one. Uh, remember this: your handwriting is your hands' accent. Say that again. I mean, my my colleague here. I said your handwriting is your hands' accent. I like that one a lot. I like that one a lot. Guys, I have a dirty joke that I want to tell you guys um, after we sign off here. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a little bit of fun after we sign off, and maybe in the future this will be a Patreon idea. Who knows? Dirty joke time. But for now, I'm Dylan. He's Nate. We were joined by TJ. Thank goodness. He'll be back. We know he will. And efforts. Have a good night. Bye.